How can we be expected to teach children to learn how to read if they can't even fit inside the building? They're the best of the best, without question. You know the question, just as I did. What is the matrix? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 memorable questions in movies. Aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? Huh? For this list, we're taking a look at the most quotable movie lines that end with a question mark. Put the gun I down. I saw you with the box. What was in the box? Because I envy your normal life. Put the gun down, David. It seems that envy is my sin. Oh, uh, what's in the box? Because some of these questions involve key plot points, a spoiler alert may be in order. I'm Ron Burgundy? Damn it! Who typed a question mark on the teleprompter? Number 10. Is it secret? Is it safe? The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. It's some form of elvish. Gandalf the Grey summons great power and confidence wherever he goes, which makes his rare moments of weakness especially effective. One ring to rule them all. In The Fellowship of the Ring, we first see Gandalf express true vulnerability when he creeps up on Frodo and asks two imperative questions regarding the One Ring. Is it secret? Is it safe? The paranoia in Gandalf's eyes and fear in his voice encompass just how powerful this piece of jewelry is and dire fate Middle-earth may face. The ring might be safe in Frodo's hands, but it won't be secret much longer. And the ring will be safe then. I don't know, Frodo. I don't have any answers. Number 9. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight, Batman? You ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Even before he became the Joker, Jack Napier made a habit of asking all his prey this strange question. Why? No reason, really. He simply liked the way it sounded. I am the world's first fully functioning homicidal artist. That's actually fitting for a character as demented and illogical as the Joker. The question turns out to have more significance than anyone initially thought, though, as Bruce Wayne discovers a parallel between the clown prince of crime and his parents' murderer. Tell me, kid. You ever dance with the devil by the pale moonlight? During his final confrontation with Batman, the question comes back to bite the Joker in the pale moonlight. Excuse me. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Number 8. What's your favorite scary movie? Scream. Yes? Who is this? Mm, who are you trying to reach? If you do indeed like scary movies, then Scream is the perfect popcorn picture for you. You like scary movies? Uh-huh. What's your favorite scary movie? As much as people might enjoy scary movies, however, nobody would ever want to experience one firsthand. Scary night, isn't it? With the murders and all, it's like right out of a horror movie or something. When a stranger asks Drew Barrymore's Casey this question over the phone, it seems like an innocent flirtation. You have to have a favorite. What comes to mind? What Casey does not realize is that she's basically accepting an invitation to be a scream queen in a slasher flick. Now she's playing a dangerous game, and despite her vast knowledge of scary movies, Casey is bound to lose. <laughs> Number 7. Did you order the code red? A few good men. Now, are these really the questions that I was called here to answer? Vital questions are asked on the witness stand every day, but few have packed a greater punch than this one from A Few Good Men. We follow orders or people die. It's that simple. Are we clear? The scene finds Daniel Caffey and Nathan R. Jessup at their boiling points as the lieutenant asks the colonel about the code red. You snotty little bastard. While the question is quotable, Jessup's response is perhaps even more iconic. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! When the truth finally comes out, everyone in the courtroom is shaken and shocked. The news is a bombshell, and although Jessup views himself as untouchable, his military career has just imploded. Did you order the code red? I did the job! Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did! Number 6. You built a time machine out of a DeLorean? Back to the future. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. When you think of time travel, what images immediately come to mind? If you're familiar with Back to the Future, chances are a DeLorean just zoomed by in your head. What did I tell you? 88 miles per hour! Before 
1985, though, nobody would have ever thought to associate these two things with one another. You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. The fact that Doc Brown discovered time travel is unbelievable, but what really blows the out-of-breath Marty McFly away is that he did so with this stylish vehicle, prompting an obscure question that's still constantly referenced even decades later. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? Number five, what do you mean I'm funny? Goodfellas. I said, all right, I'll tell you something. Go f your mother. <laughs> if you're a diehard Mojoholic, you might be asking why this particular scene keeps popping up on our various top 10 lists. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> really funny. Uh -huh. <laughs> what do you mean I'm funny? Anybody who's seen Goodfellas knows the answer, however. What? Just. You know, you're, you're funny. <laughs> Fleetingly commenting on Tommy DeVito's ability to make others laugh, Henry Hill accidentally triggers something in the volatile mobster. But well, I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you, I make you laugh, I'm here to f amuse you. What do you mean funny? Funny how? How am I funny? This historic movie moment grows more and more uncomfortable with every question Tommy asks, insisting that Henry go into greater detail. How do I know? You said I'm funny. How the f am I funny? What the f is so funny about me? Tell me. The entire exchange turns out to be another joke, though, and Henry's startled expression was the punchline. Get the f out of here, Tommy. <laughs> you motherfucker. I almost had him. I almost had him. <laughs> you stuttering prick here. <laughs> Number four. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? Pulp Fiction. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? What? Marcellus Wallace is black and bald, but he most certainly does not look like a bitch. He's black. Go on. He's bald. Does he look like a bitch? What? <laughs> Jules makes this abundantly clear to Brett and the audience in this intense scene from Pulp Fiction. Describe what Marcellus Wallace looks like. He also teaches us that when a hitman has a gun pointed at you, it's probably best not to answer his question with another question. What? Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, m Now say what one more goddamn time. Of course, it's not like there was any answer Brett could have given that would have resulted in him surviving this interrogation. He's black. Go on. He's bald. Marcellus Wallace does not take getting f***ed lightly. Just ask Zed. Nah, man. I'm pretty f***ing far from okay. Number three. Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me, aren't you? The Graduate. Look, I think I should be going. Sit down, Benjamin. Mrs. Robinson, if you don't mind my saying so, this conversation is getting a little strange. Mrs. Robinson is the OG when it comes to cougars. Now, whenever a young man finds himself dating an older woman, it's hard not to reference this classic question from The Graduate. My husband will be back quite late. He should be gone for several hours. As Benjamin finds himself backed up against a wall, he feels compelled to address the elephant in the room. Oh my God. Pardon? Oh no, Mrs. Robinson, oh no. His immortal line is only made more memorable by the suggestive angle from which director Mike Nichols shot the scene. What really seals the deal, though, is how the bumbling Benjamin follows up his question, tacking on an aren't you to make matters even more awkward. Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> Aren't you? Number two, do I feel lucky, Dirty Harry? Now you know why they call me Dirty Harry. Every dirty job that comes along. No matter how old Clint Eastwood gets, his commanding on screen presence will never wither. Whether playing a cop who doesn't play by the rules in Dirty Harry or a Korean War veteran in Gran Torino, he's somebody you never want to screw with. I know what you're thinking. Did he fire six shots or only five? Well, to tell you the truth in all this excitement, I've kind of lost track myself. This scene remains one of Eastwood's career-defining moments, as Inspector Harold Callahan practically dares a punk to take a chance and make his day. You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Eastwood conjures such grit and self-assurance that we likely wouldn't have reached for the shotgun either even though it turns out that Eastwood was empty. Oh. Before we question our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. What is your major malfunction, numbnuts? Didn't mommy and daddy show you enough attention when you were a child? So, 
me watching, he takes the knife to her, laughing while he does it. He turns to me and he says, Why so serious? That's all. Pay attention, girls. We got strays. Hi, Curly. Kill anyone today? Day ain't over yet. Sarah Connor? Yes. Is Darth Vader my father? Arrest thy maid. Yes. Rest. Number one. You talking to me? Taxi driver. I'm trying you. Our number one question has become such an identifiable staple of popular culture that it's practically its own trope. You talking to me? You talking to me? As Travis Bickle gazes into a mirror in Taxi Driver, the audience gazes into the empty void that is his soul. Lonely, deranged, and wanting nothing more than to share a human connection with anybody, Travis finds himself hounding the man in the mirror. Well, then who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. With dialogue that was amazingly improvised, he pumps himself up for the suicide mission that lies ahead. You see, Travis, this is exactly why nobody ever talks to you. Who the f do you think you're talking to? Oh, yeah? Huh? Okay. Do you agree with our list? You know who we are? What's your favorite movie question? For more questionable top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You know what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good. Thank you.